In this short video clip, we are going to be processing the data from our lab on standardizing solutions of sodium hydroxide. We had worked to prepare a standardized solution of KHP, our acid called potassium hydrogen pathalate. And we use that standard to titrate it against sodium hydroxide. Ultimately, we're trying to solve for the molarity of NaOH using KHP. You are given a data table and generated a whole series of numbers and many, many, many more trials and I will show you on my graph, but I just needed to come up with a flavor. Notice on my Logger Pro program, I only put in six points, but I only did that on purpose to show a, um, an actual just looking at an image with you. I expect you to type in into your Logger Pro program every one of the data table points that you generated. Now when we type them in, we want to know the total volume, Barrett reading, and the pH. And I noticed that we had two separate columns for however many um, you know trials that you generated. So the Burette reading versus the pH, that's what we're going to end up doing, the X and the Y axes. So take a moment and I want you to enter in all of the data into the x-axis and the y-axis into the volume and the pH reading. Notice now what I'm going to do is to label the x-axis as the volume of NaOH and the unit there will be a milliliter. So I am labeling that and the y-axis I want us to label as pH. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back and put in pH here. No units on pH. I'm going to fix this data so it actually gives me a name. We'll call it volume. Volume of NaOH in mils versus the pH. And now I get that up on my graph here. Alrighty. So you've done that. Um, pause the video if you need to. Take a moment. Get your x, y axes labeled and punch in all of those numbers that your team generated for the process of your trial of titrating. When ready, just start up the video again. A couple of things we want to be sure that we're looking at. This is called the classic curve. So in terms of your first graph that you need to show, your first graph looking as this um, plot one, pH versus volume showing the classic curve. Well, that's what we have right here. This classic curve just shows a nice straight area where we have seen the equivalence point. Make sure you remember to auto scale so you have a nice looking curve. What it's telling us in a classic curve is we have to estimate where do you believe to be halfway up, halfway up this entire area here, exactly halfway, and this is the uh, difficult part of a classic curve, you pretty much have to guess, eyeball it, where do you believe to be halfway. So I want you to insert a text annotation and that's the box that has an arrow. And I want you to just kind of grab that arrow and to where you believe, where you believe uh, halfway up your curve is and just point at it. Notice now where the arrow is and my cursor is hovering on it, we have these x, y axis points down here. Place the cursor right at the end of your arrow and read the volume versus pH. The volume here for me is 26.91. See where I was grabbing it. Of course, I move my cursor to show you and that disappears. But when I place it here, the x axis 25.56. And I'm just going to type that in here. Alrighty. So it's very difficult to do is to just estimate. That's why this one is the least accurate of all of our graphs. When you go ahead and print this graph, as you are asked to do for the classic curve, remember that you're going to print a footer. This one I want you to call graph one, a classic curve. Alrighty, and then just shoot that off to your printer. Now what we want to do, kind of thinking back to the second graph, let me grab that and kind of read it with you, we want to show a first derivative of pH versus volume. It tells us to create a new calculated column with the formula delta pH. 
and this becomes the y-axis and show the spike for the equivalence point. So let's see what this is about. So up to data, a new calculated column, see where that's highlighted here? Click that. The new calculated column now is called a name, let's call it first derivative. And then we have to find an equation for it. So now my cursor will be down here in the equation. Alrighty. So let's hit this function and I want you to find delta. See it right here? Delta. Select delta. The variables column, I want you to pick dph. What this is going to show us, delta means change, doesn't it? And what we want to do is find the greatest area of change in our graph. And when I do that, I just click Done. Now we actually have to turn on this new calculated column. And we'll do that. Put your cursor here where it says pH, and I want you to hit First Derivative. And now we get a graph that looks like this. Let's auto scale. And my graph doesn't look as nearly as good as what yours will. I'm going to just delete this from our last, um, our last guy there and get rid of this whole box if I can. And now what we want to do is find from this particular graph where you find the greatest, uh, greatest rate of change is the top of the peak. So ideally, oh this is uh, something that yours will look so much better, just kind of like the, um, on the back of the table that I showed you, this really would be a better looking graph than what I had. And that's what happens when you only put in six points. You're putting in so many more points to create a real sharp curve and then back down again. This top peak is what we want to know where the greatest rate of change is. That volume reading will tell us then the equivalence point. But since I just put in a few points, my curve is nowhere near as nice, but at least it processed with us how to find it. So for me, it's right here where my cursor is. See it? Right up at the top of the curve. So again, insert, text annotation, grab your cursor and point at the top, hover over that, hover over that spot and read the x-axis. Now the x-axis down here again, see it? Up here, when I place my cursor at the peak, it's telling me 34.92. So I'm just placing that volume into that particular text box, pointing to where I see the top of the curve, and I'm ready to print this graph. And when you print, this is graph 2, first derivative and shoot that off to your printer. Now, in order to accomplish the third task, the third one says we want a second derivative. Second derivative of pH versus volume. So again, a new calculated column. This can be done by selecting calculus from the function button and clicking the second derivative of pH. So let's show you how to do that. Second derivative of a volume and the y, x value. So here's what we'll end up doing. Data, new calculated column. The calculated column this time will be called second derivative. And I think this one by far is the nicest for accurate measurement. I think I spelled the right derivative. We go to function, select calculus, and this time we want the second derivative. See it? Let me do it again for you. Calculus under the functions button and the second derivative. This time we still want it to be of the pH, so I clicked variable pH and done. Now of course we need to hover here on the y-axis and turn on the second derivative and we get this looking curve. I'm going to definitely need to auto scale. Now keep in mind, I did not have nearly as many points. So when I'm looking at a nice second derivative curve, this is the, the graph that you're looking at when you put your data in. Remember, I only put six trials in. You're putting in 30 plus trials, I'm sure. And you'll have enough of those points to give you this nice second derivative curve. But because I didn't, I could at least show you the process of finding it. So my second derivative 
is pretty pathetic looking actually. What we needed to see is an area where it went down and then back up again. So looking back at what it should look like, if we just process this point, this right here where my uh, hand is hovering really with this little cursor, this is where your equivalence point is. So this is where the text box will be. It's the intersection of your x-axis. So looking at mine, I don't have an up and a down spike, you know, looking at this particular curve from Logger Pro, but this is where you want to draw your text box and record the second derivative NaOH volume. So for me, the point of intersection is right here. So this is where I would insert my text box, text annotation, and just point where you have the x-axis being intersected. All right, see so, you now I don't have an up and down spike because my graph is nowhere nearly uh, complete enough. Get rid of the previous graph or text box. And now here, my point of intersection, notice this is the x-axis, this is the zero mark, positive values, negative values. If this is my intersection, put your cursor there and hover, and it's 26.08. Whoops. And now you're off and ready to shoot that to the printer. Remember when you print, you want to print the, f the text box with it, so print uh, graph 3, and this is called the second derivative, and shoot that off to the printer. Now keep in mind that you still have to record those values into your data table. So once you have those text box values, remember that those are the values that you'll just record equivalence point graph 1, graph 2, graph 3, and I want you to average those for this particular point. Remember that we only did one trial, so I expect you to just be able to draw a line here through trial 2. This is the point, then the average value that you'll use as you calculate your data analysis down below. Alrighty, so using the equivalence point here, we'll calculate those three data analysis using that particular number. Alrighty.